Welcome to RC Foam Fighters. I'm Frank and thanks for joining me on this update on my FF Sparrow and Skyfighter version 3. Um, a couple weeks ago I did get a chance to get the Sparrow out for another flight um, with the bigger motor on it, but um, I didn't get any good footage of it because the camera was really blurry that day for some reason. Um, it didn't really matter because uh, within the first few minutes of the flight um, one of the spars broke loose and the plane started flapping its wings like a bird. <laughs> so it was living up to his name, the Sparrow. Um, anyway, I've gotten uh, that fixed and I put in an additional spar running in between the two diagonal spars this way underneath the wing. So the Sparrow is ready to go out for some more test flying. Um, I did put the old motor back on and I'm going to try it with the bigger prop instead and try it first with that motor and then maybe later put the bigger motor back on. Um, as far as the uh, Skyfighter version 3 goes. Um, I didn't really like the way that the Doppler readings came out on the videos that we took, um, so that's why I haven't really posted any of the speeds in the, the speed challenge yet. Um, but I do want to go ahead and take a look at it and show you guys why I decided not to post those Doppler readings um, to give you a little bit of an idea how the Doppler works a little bit better. I know Paul touched on it a little bit in his one of his recent videos. Um, I wanted to go in a little bit more and show you guys how it works and how you can read the files a little bit better. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those Doppler files. Okay guys, before we can use the Doppler shift uh, program to calculate speed, um, you have to make a WAV file from the video that you took. So I've um, already gone and selected some of the footage from the video and spliced out pieces of it. Um, I just wanted to show you a quick clip of one of the ones that I've gotten that I think was one of the faster uh, files of the plane flying. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that and then we'll go ahead and jump right into using the Doppler. Okay, this was probably one of the fastest passes that I had. Okay, after you've selected the pass, we want to go ahead and save it as a WAV file. Um, Paul and I use Sony Vegas for all of our video editing and we can just go in here and render it as whatever type of file we want. So I just chose a WAV file. If you have any other kind of uh, video editing program, you should be able to um, probably convert it into a WAV file. If not, you can probably download some kind of free program off the internet that will convert uh, movie files into WAV files. Um, so basically I've created a folder to keep all my WAV files in and I'm just going to save this one in there. And okay, the file is saved in there. And now we just go into Wavescope, open it, and take a look at the different WAV files. I've already saved several different ones from different passes on here, so we'll take a look at a couple of them. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Alright, on Wavescope you can choose the colors that you want to look. These are just basically the right and left channels. There's red for one side, green for the other. I usually click on both of them so that it gives me a more solid lines to look at. It shows the red, both the left and the right channels are being shown at the same time. Um, this is not that file that I chose, it's a different one. I wanted to show you this one first because there's a lot of squiggly lines here. Um, this is a really bad Doppler file to read. Um, there's too much going on here. Basically, according to the instructions, what you really want is to have a straight line coming up and then a curve over to the left and then a curve back up straight going straight up. Um, these other angles that we were getting here are differences in the speed of the motor or maybe differences in the angle of the approach or changes in altitude will cause different uh, lines to appear. Um, so this would be a bad one to choose from and especially if you go from the tip here all the way to the widest point down here you're definitely going to get a faulty reading um, because this portion here is not at the constant speed or is not at the constant altitude or you're coming at a different angle here. So if the lines are not parallel to each other you're getting a variation in your speed which will skew your uh, actual mile an hour or kilometer per hour that you're getting. Um, let's look at a little bit better file here. Alright, even in this file the lines are pretty straight and according to the instructions, the bottom line is your approach coming towards you. Then when it curves over here, this is the flyby as it's going over your head or over the, the recording device. 
and then the curve back straight up this is the fly past you after you've passed and you're gone by um, like I said you want these two lines to be parallel also this bumpiness in the curve is saying that there's something happening here as well that's not hundred percent right um, it should be a smooth pretty straight line as well but there's kind of an undulation in there um, according to the instructions you want to sample the sound wave file at a, between 8,000 Hertz and 16,000 Hertz so um, you want to start at the top and left click and it's usually on this file is pretty close to somewhere in the middle so I'll pick this one here and see where we're at okay that's actually kind of low it's still at 4,000 Hertz so I'm gonna come over a little bit farther see if I can see one that's still good alright that's at about 7,000 there so we'll follow that line over and come down here to the bottom where it's straight again and left click okay and then it reads in between these two points and gives you the difference um, it's giving a very high reading it's saying 341 kilometers an hour and I know that can't be right um, because I only calculated the speed of the plane the prop speed was only calculated at about 185 so let's see what this actually comes out to it's saying that that's 211 miles an hour on that pass um, even with the 20 mile an hour wind um, I don't think that it's capable the plane should not have been capable of reaching that speed at 185 plus 20 it's not going to be that fast plus you're not going to ever really hit 100 percent of what your prop pitch speed is usually you're going to be about 10 percent less so this file here, and another reason I know that it's probably not accurate is because the farther over left you get, the higher the speed goes. So right now we're at this far over, we're at 341. If I come even farther left, it goes way up. Here it's saying 388 kilometers an hour. And that's just not true. It, it was not going that fast. I know for sure the plane was not doing 230 240 miles an hour all right we'll take a look at one other file this one here looks cleaner than the rest of them let's go ahead and put it on okay double colors on it's again it's coming pretty close to straight up then it curves over and there's no undulations are really in the the curve over and then it comes back straight up and even here I'm still pretty sure that it's not 100% accurate because I don't think the plane was flying straight at the camera it was coming at an angle but let's see what kind of speeds we got from this one alright so this is in between 6,000 and 10,000 so that's in that range and it's saying 287 let's see if we can get farther over a little bit This one is from 7,000 to 11,000, and we're down, it dropped to 305 kilometers an hour. Go over one more. And it's back up to 321, so there's a lot of variation in the speed here, and that's why I don't want to use any of these files to enter into the speed challenge, because it, I don't honestly believe that these are accurate. So in order to get an accurate reading with the Doppler you need to be make sure that the plane is flying straight at the sound recording device whether it be a camera or a microphone you want to fly straight at it and right over it the plane should be flying level and at full throttle the whole time um, if you're varying the, the speed of the engine it'll change the pitch of the noise and it'll change the Doppler reading if you're climbing or descending it'll also change the distance to the microphone which will also change the sound in a way that will affect the speed. Um, veering to one side or the other will also show up. And like I said, you can usually read it in the, the wave files. If you have a really clean one that comes straight down, then curves over and comes straight back down, that's usually pretty good. But another indicator would be going from one side to the other. And if you see a very large variation in speed, it's probably not accurate either. So we'll go ahead and uh, we're going to discard these ones. Um, I'm still thinking the plane was pretty fast, so I'm hoping that it's hitting in the, my target range that I was planning on of about 170. 
uh, which I think would probably be a little more realistic than these numbers here. Um, they're just way too high. Okay, guys, I think this is a good spot to go ahead and finish up the video. Um, wish me luck for next weekend if the weather's better so we can get both these planes out and uh, get some speed clocks on them. Uh, before we go, I just wanted to remind everybody, please don't forget to sign up for RC Foam Fighters free giveaway this month. Um, you do have to go to the video and post a comment in the comment section that says um, you want to be entered in the drawing. Um, I'll put a link in the video sidebar to that video so that way you can get to it. Um, you do have to be a subscriber to enter, so please, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe first and then put your comment in the comment section of that video and you'll be entered in the contest. Um, thanks for watching RC Foam Fighters and I'll see you guys again soon.